Hallelujah, Hallelujah. May all glory give back to you. Jesus, we love you, and you are good. Generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. 
of you, we can believe. All we believe is in you. Amen. Because you have overcome the death, overcome the cross, so that we have the confidence. We can believe in your words.
brothers and sisters, you, may we use our words to praise our Lord. Hallelujah, yes, Lord. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. Thank you for your thank love. You, you are you. worthy of our praise, Lord. Thank thank you, Lord. 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 Wonderful Lord. You are our strength. A sacrifice for us. Because of your sacrifice. Yes, you are our fortress. We are, we are out of sin. We want to worship you, Lord. For your love never because ends. Because of your sacrifice. We can for your love is one that to the care of you. Jesus, thank you. Yeah. The sacrifice shows your love. Jesus, Jesus, because of the sacrifice, we can feel how loved you are with us. God will like to give our hearts to you. God, please help us. To give all our hearts, all our minds, and all our soul to you, our holy God. Because originally it all belongs to you. Jesus, please receive our thank. Please receive our our mind and soul.
continue to be with us and lead us Amen. until we come back to see you. Yes, hallelujah. It is the same attitude. Let us prepare our heart to partake the communion. This morning, I want to share to you the message is called Six Ways to Renew Your Mind. There was an, the, in the ancient time, the, the one city, and then this city, you know, the Chinese city, they have uh, the, the wall and then gate, and outside the gate, they have uh, people selling Chinese tea and drinking. All the old people just sit there and do nothing, just drink tea, and it's looking at people coming in and going out. Okay, this city, one of the wise men, Normally, wise men are very old, am I right? Just like Ron, you see the, the hair. <laughs> I think your hair is... Ron, your hair... Ron, your hair is because you are old or because you're, you're natural color? Natural color. Natural color, okay. Oh, it's natural color. <laughs> For Chinese, when your color is all gray, means you are very wise already. Wow, you're very wise. Huh? Okay, so this uh, one day, one of the uh, merchandise who, who do business come along, and then before he entered to the city gate, so he will sit down at the tea, uh, 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 the, the tank there, and then talk to the people to try to find out what, how about the people inside this city, because he want to do business. And he asked this old man, how about the, city, the people in this city? Are they uh, friendly or are they, are they uh, not friendly to the outsider? And then he said, no, uh, where where you come from, young man? He said, I came from another city. I just uh, doing some business over there. He said, uh, how about the people over there? How they treat you? He said, oh, very unfriendly. They treat outsiders very unfriendly. They do not like us. They speak words very sarcastic. And then they, they, they reject us. Uh, that place, I won't go again. He said, oh, too bad. Our city people also same like that. Huh? Wow, what to do? Doing business, no choice. You have to still go in. So I went in. Then another young man also doing business also come by and they was also sit there, have some tea and then ask him the same question. And then the old man asked him the same question, where you come from, how about the people treating you? He said, oh, that city that is very good, very friendly and treat me very well as though I'm one of them. He said, oh, you are lucky, our people are also so friendly. Then he also happily went in. So this old man also got a, a lot of friends drinking tea together. He said, hey, hey friend. How? But the same question ask, they, they're asking the same question, but how come you give a different answer? Actually, what kind of people we have in our city? You see, actually, it's not so much about our people, it's your attitude. If you come with a bad attitude, you only see all the bad things in your life and around you. When you come with a good attitude, you see all the good people around you. Hello? Am I right? Do you like Hong Kong? Hello? Do you think Hong Kong is good? No, la, Hong Kong government, Hong Kong people, Hong Kong MTR, Hong Kong, wah, everything not good. But for a lot of people came to Hong Kong, Hong Kong very good, very convenient. Transportation convenient, you no need, do not need to have a car, you can travel everywhere. Am I right? You can see the beautiful part of Hong Kong or you want to see the, all the ugly part. So it's up to you, brother and sister, that Bible say you must renew your mind. And sometimes, as pastor, we preach a lot of things, you must, you must, but how? Don't know. <laughs> Never teach you how. I would like to not only stress that we must renew our mind, but also teaching you six ways to renew your mind. We see, let's read the scripture in Proverbs. I this, uh, in the whole Bible, 66 book, I don't know which Bible verse is your it's your, the, 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 the one that your favorite, the most favorite. This is my most favorite. Uh, not 316. Uh, not Matthew 7 7. Uh, seek ye first the kingdom. Uh, no, uh, you seek and he give you and all things. This is my favorite. Okay, let's read together. Keep your heart with all, all vigilance, and from it flow the spring of life. Everything springs from your heart. 
So you have to keep your heart. Which heart? This heart? This physical heart? No. This physical heart can change to be a plastic one. Am I right? <laughs> yes. But it's talking about your heart. It's a philosophical heart. It's your mind, your thinking. Keep your thinking, keep your heart, because everything flows out from your thinking. So let's see another scripture. Uh, uh, okay. Let's read together. To put off your old self, which belongs to you, your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desire, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and to put on a new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. This is Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. Okay, they say, see very clearly, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Mind. Let's see the, the in the original Greek. Okay, to be renewed in the spirit of your mind means what? Anamnestai. Oh, no need to read. Huh? Okay, okay. To be renewed continuously in the spirit of your mind means because this is a present tense. In the Greek, when you use present tense, you are as you are emphasizing the aspect of continuous, continuous uh, action. You have to continually. Renew in your spirit of your mind. Not only one time, only on Sunday, pastor preach, okay, I believe what pastor say. Then Monday you go back, go, go back to the old way of thinking. No, you have to continuously change your mind, renew and renew, renew. Then you can become another new person. So, let's see another scripture in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Let's read. Renewing your mind and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind, that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That means the will of God is always good for you and me. Can you say amen? amen. And the will of God always is acceptable by God and acceptable by you. And then the will of God is always is perfect. Just perfect for you, your talent. So the will of God always is good, but sometimes we do not know. How can we know the will, the good and acceptable, or we say pleasing, the very pleasing and perfect will of God is to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How to do that? Let's see the, the original Greek also. To be transformed by the renewing of your mind means directly translation from Greek. Huh? You must, it's a command. It's not a choice. It's a command. You must continuously, also present tense, be transformed. Be transformed in the original metamorphose. Just like the English word metamorphosis. Do you understand what the transform means? Means from the caterpillar. Do you know caterpillar? Very beautiful? Beautiful? No, I agree. Can caterpillar fly? Cannot. Only crawl. And then caterpillar, is it a good Insect or a bad insect? It's not a good one. It's a bad one. It eat everything, all the leaf. But be transformed, become metamorphosis into a butterfly. Butterfly can fly. Butterfly is beautiful. Butterfly is good insect. Am I right? So that means your life can be transformed, not just you are like this, become Better yesterday, not better. Become totally 180, 180 degree change. You are a bad person now, become a good person. Not a good person, become a better person. No. It's totally transformed. You can fly now. Your life becomes so beautiful. Very different. Amazingly different. So this is what the Lord intend for us to renew our mind and be transformed. How can our life be transformed, become like butterfly? So beautiful, so pleasing to a lot of people. People chase after butterfly, but people run away from caterpillar. Am I right? How can my life become so beautiful and people like to be my friend? How can I do that? Yes, today I want to share to you six ways. Do you want that? The six keys is very important. Okay, normally you want to learn all these things, you have to go and pay, pay, pay something to attend the seminar. 
the uh, the motivational uh, preacher or not not a preacher motivational uh, lecturer they will they give you this secret but you have to pay first ah okay but i give you free can you say amen? amen okay let's see first one how to renew your mind see number one let's see how the first one okay what is this select idea that fire you wow you see you have to select idea that fire you because everything flow from your decision everything flow from your decision when you want to marry a girl for, for a guy huh? before you marry you have to make a decision whether i want to live with you forever or not not forever at least this 50 years or 60 years i have to make a choice everything flow from your choice I don't know, before you come, did you make a choice to come or not? In your mind, you're saying, come or not come? Yeah, I want to come, then you come. Before you come, you maybe had to make a choice. What kind of shirt I want to dress? Am I right? Hello? You never make any choice? You had to make a choice. When you want to have a meal, always you go there, especially in Hong Kong. Uh, the first time I came to Hong Kong, uh, I, I went to the May Sam, uh, Maxim, uh, and uh, in Malaysia, we don't, we don't decide before we come to the counter. We come to the counter only we see what you have, what is the offer. When we try to choose, then the cashier say, next. They don't wait for us, they say, next. That means they do not want to waste time. I have to make my choice before I come to the, count the, the counter. I have to think what I want. Then my turn, I say, I want this, this, this. Or else they will say, next. Have you come across people like that? <laughs> yes. Even to go to the coffee shop or anything, you still look around, you say, what do you want? Uh, uh, okay, they go already. They say, after you make your choice, then I come back. <laughs> Am I right? But in Malaysia, different. They can stand there, slowly, take your time. The queue is very long. They say, never mind, take your time. So good. <laughs> But Hong Kong cannot. <laughs> the manager will fire you. How can you make the... You have to say next. <laughs> so you have to make your choice. But you have to make a choice to choose the idea that fire you or pull you down. You have to choose. When you come to Hong Kong, every day you wake up. Oh, it's Monday. I have to go to school. It's a working day. Or say, wow, oh, another week. I can prove myself to my boss. Or I can do my business. What is your idea that you choose to come into your mind? For, for men, to choose a wife is very important. Huh? In a Mother's Day, my wife preached preach about the, 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 the topic on the woman. When you choose the right woman, it will bless three generations. Yes, when you choose the right woman, Michael, your, your wife will become a blessing to your parents. When they are old, they are not afraid because they have a good daughter-in-law to take care of them. And make sure you will pay. Because your wife is a good wife. Not only that, your, when you marry a good wife, your wife will make sure you will happy, have a happy life. Second generation. When you have a good wife, your wife will make sure your children will have a good education, family, good food. Am I right? Third generation. So, wow! For men, to choose a good wife is very important. For women, also very important to choose a good husband. Am I right? Yes. And also for men, to choose a right career is also very important. So, make a choice is very important. You have to make a choice, not only your career, your wife, your family, but you have to choose what comes into your mind. We know how to choose what food to eat, but how about idea that come to your mind? When you look at your wife after 10 years, what happened to me? Why I choose her? <laughs> the, the idea will come in. Why I choose her that time? I chose, chose the wrong one. The idea will come to you. You have to reject. You say, no, we have a good time. You can choose to remember all the good things or to remember all the bad things. 
No one is perfect in this world, am I right? The same thing, when you come to this church, you can choose, ah, not so many people, so we can have a close fellowship. Am I right? Or you say, hey, not so many people. Lah. Ah, I don't like to come. I want to go very big, a lot of people. When you go there, how come nobody know me? After 10 years or so, nobody know me. And they ask you also, are you first timer? Ah, I'm already 10 years. You still greet me, are you first timer? Oh yeah, you feel bad. Because everything got good and bad. When you have more people, more activities. But less people, more closer. Am I right? Hello? You will easily know everyone here. As we continue to grow, we just one month. Now it's the second month. After we grow, you grow together with us. When we are hundred, you know all hundred people. You know everybody. Everybody know you. You feel very close. It's up to you to choose. Okay? So you must know how to choose, make a good choice, what happened in your heart. So let's see the first one, second. Second one. First one is select. Let us say select ideas. Select. Select. Once again, select. select. Then second one is reject any voice that put you down. I say together, reject. 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 Yeah. So the voice will come to your mind. Satan always try to put the negative thought into our mind. Especially in Hong Kong. When you open your Facebook, every day, people speak negatively. Am I right? Very seldom people speak positively. When they want to talk about government, eh, when they want to talk about pastor, eh, when they talk about churches, eh, surely got something to criticize. Am I right? Every day I saw all these people. I said, sometimes I want to, to send some message to counter it, but I, said, I don't want to bother them. The more you speak, the more want to pour out to you. Am I right? They are react. Uh, say, not to be so negative, can, can think positively. Say, you do not know what is happening. Don't try to run away the fact, run away the reality. Uh. Reality is not only one side, reality also got another side. Am I right? Uh, when, when you are in Hong Kong, people ask me, Pastor Ong, you are from Malaysia. How come you want to stay in Hong Kong? Hong Kong, I want to get out from Hong Kong already. You still come in and your family, whole family come in here. Why? Of course, first thing I say, God called us to stay back. And I continue to say the good thing about Hong Kong. I like Hong Kong. First thing, it's very convenient. Yeah. In, Hong, in Malaysia, we have to drive. But traffic jam. A lot of time, traffic jam. If you work up to five, then you jam two hours. When you reach home, about seven. When you jam home, no, way, no place to park your car. Because every, every household got two or three cars. They can park one car into their, uh, their fence, then another two they park outside. Everybody has to try to find place to park. park. That's why in our in Malaysia, very hard to do cell group. Because cell group, we want to go to your house, no place to park our car. We go there half an hour, after jam two hours, reach your, your place, no place to park our car. We round and round half an hour, then we go back. No place to park because even the people who stay around that area also not enough place. Everyone have to buy their own car because the, the transportation is not convenient. When you start to come out from university, you have to buy car already. Uh, Josephine, uh, you know, uh, Malaysia, you know. Everybody got car. Yeah. So, but the problem is where to park your car. It's very inconvenient, inconvenient. But Hong Kong is very convenient. You do not need to have a car. You can go anywhere. First thing. Second thing, you can eat all kinds of food in Hong Kong. As long as you have money. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> you want Western star, you want Thailand food, uh, you Thai food, you want Malaysian food also now got. Uh, every uh, laksa, all kinds of food. If you can name it, you can find it in Hong Kong. You can travel just about one hour or half an hour, you can reach there and then have a good food. Yeah. And in Hong Kong, anything you, you need, actually you can find it here very easily, convenient. So, not only that, Hong Kong got four seasons. Because in Malaysia, we only got one season. That is called summer, all the year long, summertime. But here we have winter, we have, huh? of course the autumn is very short, <laughs> then the winter, then the uh, springtime, then we have now summertime. So we have different times, so we can change clothes. Especially in the winter time, we, for Malaysian we like you, you don't need to own an icon. Huh? We really enjoy the winter time and the springtime. So actually we, we love it. 
We love Hong Kong. We, the, the more, the longer we stay here, the longer we love it. We see all the beautiful things here. Reject. Okay, I want to ask you, uh, when you have a, let's say, char siu pao, you know char siu pao? I like to char, eat char siu pao. Huh? Uh, that means the Chinese, uh, what? Tamlin. Uh, uh, it's tamlin. Uh. Pao. Pam, pam, uh, huh? Okay. When you, let's say, you're not, uh, not careful and then you drop it on the ground, what do you, what do? You do? Pick up. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> you pick it up. You don't want to waste it. You peel off all the skin and then eat the inside. But other people, they may not want to eat it. They say, I just put it away. Uh, okay. Normally, you don't eat. Huh? Hong Konger, normally, something dropped to the floor. Don't eat. Am I right? You have to put away what already dropped and dirty. Not hygiene, not, not good for your body. Okay? You know how to put it away. How about the voices come to your mind? You don't know how to reject. Everything comes to your mind, you accept, accept, accept. Why? When people say bad things about you, what you say to why you accept so fast? I see a lot of people in Hong Kong, you have to speak very carefully. Because Hong Kong people speak very careful because they do not want to hurt other people. And other people also very careful they not hurt you. I can see here that very, everybody are very, uh, how to say, very careful not to hurt the feeling of others. Why? Because everybody easily hurt by the words of others. Hello? Are you, uh, do you agree? In Malaysia, it's different. Everybody used to speak very sarcastic words or <laughs> racism. <laughs> why Malay like that? Why Chinese like that? Why the Indian like that? This is, this is how we live. This is our character. We don't, we don't feel bad. We can laugh ah, ha, 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 like that. But here, people are easily hurt, very sensitive. Why? I want to tell you what. What is the reason? It's because your heart don't have a door. Anybody can go into your heart and hurt you and go out. Whatever they say hurt you. Whether they purposely speak it out or not purposely, intentionally or unintentionally hurt you also. Why you say like that? Oh, I did not mean that. Even though you don't mean that, you already hurt me. Oh. Why so easily hurt by people? Because you don't have a door. Do you know a door for what? When you, your house got a door, why? Why you close your door at night? You want to protect your possession in your house. Protect the people in your house. That's why you have a door. When people knock at your door, you will see who is this? Oh, Pastor Ong. Then only you open. Only friends, relatives can come in. Stranger, sorry, I do not know you. Door is for protection. You only welcome who you know that you welcome in. To reject who you do not know, the stranger, to hurt you or take away uh, precious things from your house. But how about your heart? If you do not know how to have a door to protect your heart, then you are easily hurt by people who ever say anything. You understand? I came across a, a member who said to me, he said, Pastor, he worked in the, we call it a, uh, taking photo, and, then, uh, and the boss said to him, he said, if somebody hurt you or uh, not good to you, you don't beat them. Because when you beat them, they only feel pain for one week and all the pain disappeared. But you speak words that hurt their feeling. Forever they remember you. Wow, the boss teaching him to do, do that. I say, better don't learn from your boss. This is not a good boss. He teach you how to be very cruel in your words, to speak things that hurt the dignity or the feeling of others, that the person feel bad every time see you, also feel bad. Don't do that. But you know, uh, sometimes people purposely speak words to hurt your feeling so that you will react. You understand? When you react, they say, yeah. So I will sue you because you beat me. In Hong Kong, there's a law. I don't think when you speak things that you can, you can uh, uh, sue the person. 
cannot. But when a person beat you, you can sue the person. Am I right? Am I right? That's why you see people go, 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 but you cannot do anything. But when they start to move their hand and hit another person, oh, that's why they purposely hit me, no, hit me, no, hit me. No. They ask you, they challenge you, hit me, hit me. They will speak all the faulty word and bad word to stir your emotion. Hopefully, you will beat them, then they will sue you. Wow, how come people like that? Yes, you must have a door. You speak anything, I reject, I reject, I reject. Do you know when husband and wife, when they, are, they have different opinion or when they quarrel, they will purposely speak the word that really pierce into the heart. Hello, husband and wife, you understand? Huh? My wife and me, we have very good experience already. 30 years of marriage. Huh? Huh? About 30 years, huh? 1988, we married. Until today is 30 anniversary. We know how to, which button to press. The green one press, happy. The red one press, burst. Boom. We know which button to press. So we know what word to speak to stir the emotion to hurt the other party. We know. Nobody knows. Only we know. We know which one. I say this one, you will. Oh, oh, oh. Then after years, I learn. Why should I so sensitive to the words she said? Whatever she said, Negative or positive, she's my wife. I have to reject. I don't take it so seriously. Sometimes because we, we treasure each other, we want the person to be perfect. You know me so much, so close to me, it's 30 years already. How can you speak like that to me? How can you say this? We, we want to hold that so tight. No, just relax and just reject it. No, I'm not like that. I know you purposely want to pierce into my heart and stir my emotion. I know, I won't. I won't, I won't fall into the trap. I reject, I reject. Can you reject? Say together, reject. 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 All the words from enemy. Enemy, your Satan will always use your, your closest one. Normally your husband and wife to speak the word that you do not want to hear. If... A stranger speaks speak something bad about you, you don't take it seriously, am I right? You won't. You do not know me, who are you? I don't listen to you. But when he use your loved one, or your family members, or your brother, or your sister, or your pastor, oh, how can pastor speak like that? Hurt me so deeply, I will not want to come to this church anymore. When your wife speaks something hurt you, I don't want to sleep with my wife anymore. When your brother speaks something, was sensitive. I don't want to be your brother anymore. When you go to the boss, boss says something, oh, you heard it, I don't want to work anymore, I resign. So where you go? <laughs> Have a door. Close your door to all these unpleasant things. Reject all the voices put you down. Only welcome all the good words. Can I say reject? Reject. reject. Amen. That one. That one is to inject ideas that leave you. Inject. The first one is what? Select. Second one is reject. That one is inject. Wow. You know, Chinese people, we know how to eat something that when you are weak, you have to have some soup, specially made for you after a few hours. Then when you drink, it will strengthen your body. Am I right? We say bo in Chinese. Huh? In English, I don't know they, they have this kind of things or not. This normally is eat vitamin, uh, pill, uh, huh? we com uh, uh, B complex, uh, uh, all kinds of things. Huh? Okay, omega 3 or what. Huh? So, this is supplement. We will take in some supplement to strengthen our body. Okay. Yes, we know how to eat. When you know you are tired recently, or maybe you need to work whole night, you will drink some coffee. Wow. Strengthen you. Yes. How your your heart, how your mind. We need to instill and inject into our mind the good things that will strengthen you. That will lift you up. As Bible say, your heart just like a field. Whatever you plant in the field, it will grow. So the Bible say, especially in Psalm chapter one, verse uh, verse two, it say, you have to memorize or you have to think about the Word of God. But in the meditate on the Word of God day and night, you will become like a plant, a tree planted by the, the side of the river. Am I right? And you will bear fruit and your leaf is green. 
Wow! Meditate on the word of God. But the, in the original word, the meditate is not keep quiet and think. Mm, mm, mm. No. Meditate in the original word means haga. Say, to, say after me. Haga. Haga. Haga means what? Murmuring as you pondering. Once again. Murmuring as you pondering. Wow. This is called meditate. Means when you read the Bible, let's say the verse say, uh, uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Can you memorize it? I can do all things with Christ who strengthened me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. You have to continue to murmur about it and then pondering. How? I, I show you. I can do all things. I, 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 have can, I have to do. I do. Not Christ do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can do all things, everything that I need to do. Not only one or two things. I can do all things that through Christ who strengthened me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Not through my, my, my own wisdom or my knowledge. Through the Christ that who strengthened me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. He will not do for me. He will strengthen me that I have to do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Wow! I have to be strengthened. Then I can do it. My strength comes from God, but it was strengthened from inside of me. Wow! Then you realize, what am I doing? I'm meditating the Word of God. Meditating is not to close your eyes and then, mm, then fall to sleep. Okay, no. Meditating is murmur as you ponder. You talk and talk and talk, talk to yourself. We call it scripture self-talking. Let's say John chapter 3 verse 16. Can you memorize? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him shall have eternal life, and shall not perish but have eternal life. How can we meditate on the Word of God? Okay. For God so loved Hilbert Ong. I put my name there. And He gave His only Son, and together with everything He is willing to give to me, that whosoever, if Hilbert Ong believe in Him, I shall not perish and have eaten life. So you have to think about how God loved me. And if I believe, I will receive. So you can put yourself into the Word of God and meditate and talk to yourself. This is called scripture self-talking. Amen. So this is called inject. You have to inject good, good, good things, good thoughts and the promises of God into your mind. That's why sometimes memorize the word of God is very important. Uh, previously, I also teach my member, uh, I also learn, I have a card. We call it uh, a devotional card. Only a small card. I don't have a big card. Why? Small card you can carry with yourself. And then small card only write, write only one thing, only one scripture. You can read the whole chapter of the Bible, but you must choose only one word. Not two. One only. Don't be too, too greedy. I know you can eat a lot, but only one meal, you can only take, order one meal. Huh? You cannot take all the 10 meals and eat for one, one meal, cannot. You cannot eat tomorrow lunch or so, cannot. <laughs> you eat today, you only for, for this meal. So I have to choose one word for today. So after I choose the word, I write there and memorize that word. That helped me to go through that day. So you have to choose and memorize the word of God. Let's see the third one, uh, the fourth one. What is this? Too fast, you, you give me the color. Okay. It's, this is, you see, what, what is this old lady doing? Huh? What is this man doing? What is he say? Oh, the power. They can collect power. This is called power bank. <laughs> see, see the, the word. Collect God's best energy. Wow. <laughs> so the picture is very interesting. Huh? Collect God's best power energy into your life. You have to collect it. Today, we can have the power bank, we can understand. Previously, you don't understand. How to collect power with me? Cannot. We had to find a place to plug in. Now you have power bank. So you understand. You can collect power into your power bank and carry the power together with you. Wherever you go, no place to, uh, to, to charge. Never mind, I got power bank. Charge. Then you can use your phone. Do you have the idea today? You can carry the power of God in you, with you. And the power is already in you. That Jesus said, I must go. I must go. Why? That He may come. 
Who? The paracletes, the Holy Spirit. He may come and dwells in you. And let him move, energize in you. As he energizes, then the energy, the power, strengthen your inner man. You will become stronger and stronger. You need to always collect the power of God. How to collect? Do you know how to collect? How, how to have power bank? How to charge your power bank? You have to plug into the, uh, the socket, then overnight, then full, then you can use. The same thing. How are we going to strengthen our inner man? Through prayer. The more you pray, the more stronger you are. Your phone, you need to be charged, recharged. Your power bank has to recharge. How about your spiritual life? No need. I don't need to pray. When I have trouble, only I pray. Too bad. <laughs> but, uh, until that time, you are too weak already. You have to always recharge. Come to God. God, you are my strength. You are my fortress. You, you will strengthen me. Huh? I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. He will empower you. He will strengthen you. Through prayer, have communion with God, we are receiving all the resources and power. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And if you stick with me, connect with me, and you will have you will bear fruit. Because why? All the nutrition, all the things come from the tree. When the branches away, detach from the tree, you cannot bear any fruit. Same thing. Always pray to God. Always connect with God. Okay? Oh, now, uh, let's see number five. Okay? What is this? This is to see future. This is the present, but you will see future. Let's see another one. This is the baby. <laughs> baby with a with a dream, huh? and this person, wow, project, projector on the head. So let's say, project your dream. Let's say together, project your dream. The first one is what? Select. Select. Second one? Reject. Third one? Inject. The fourth one? Collect. The fifth one? Project your dream. Everyone, we have a dream. We have something that we want to do. But we must have a projection of our dream. What kind of person you want to be? You must really think about it. And then one uh, professor in the school is an economic uh, professor. And he one day, he asked the student, come, we're going to have an exam. The exam is very simple, only one question. You just answer one question. But in the paper, got three questions. One is very difficult to answer. But if you answer this question called A, A question, you will have 50 mark, the full mark is 50. If you answer this, 50 mark is the highest. But the second one is not so easy, also not difficult, but the highest of the score is 40 marks. And the last one, the third one, number C, is if you answer this question, it's very easy. But the full mark is only 30, 30 points. Okay? So you can choose only one. So the students try to figure out, wow, economy, you have to think. Uh -huh. If I choose a difficult one, I think the highest I can score is 25. If I choose the second one, 40 marks, I think I can score about 30. But if I'm not so, if the lecturer is or his professor is not satisfied, maybe 28 or 25. If I choose the last one, 30 marks, I, so easy, I will get a full mark. If lesser, also 28. So which one I choose? Most of the people choose C. The full mark is 30. That one is easy. You have confidence to score 30 or 38 at least. But few people choose B, the 40 marks. You see, they try to challenge themselves. But only f few of them, less than five, choose A, the difficult one. Then the, after the answer, half an hour, the one hour, then the professor say, okay, now exchange your paper to each other. Then whoever choose A, give them 50 marks. <gasps> whoever choose B, give them 40 marks. Whoever choose C, give them 30 marks. How come like that? How come like that? Say, I give you the highest. I don't want to see how you answer. I give you the highest. Since you choose C, the highest 30, I give you 30. Why you are not satisfied? If you choose B, the highest 40, why you are not satisfied? Then the A1 got 50. You see, you do not see the answer whether it's correct or not. Never mind. 
my test is not about how you answer. My test is about what is your choice. Wow! Everybody come to this world only one time. Can you become a, a human being the second time? And no, only one time. So you only have one life. How you want to live your life? Hello? You have to choose, you have to project what kind of life I want to live. For me, I'm 55. If I got 10 years to continue to work, up to 65, then I retired. I have to think what kind of person I want to be in these 10 years. What kind of things I want to do before I regret. Too late. If I feel for 65 after retired, I have to think because in Hong Kong, people are the long life, am I right? The longest. Huh? They have a long life. Uh, do I want to live my long life in the hospital with all the tube on my body for another 10 years? No. You must project what kind of life you want to live. What kind of things you want to accomplish in your life. You have to project. So you have to project, brand sister, is very important. As you project, then you can see what you can accomplish in your life. But a lot of time we have dreams, but we never project our dreams. One time a pastor asked the secretary, Hey sister, what is your dream actually? The sister say, uh, the pastor asked her a very important question. She said, If you know that you will never fail, you surely succeed. Succeed. What do you want to do? And she said, if I know that I will surely success and never fail, I want to be a kindergarten teacher. And the pastor said, ask, why? Because I want to bring the colorful life, the color into like a plain paper, into the life, into the heart of a child. Their, their heart is so like a white paper without uh, anything. I want to bring in a lot of colors to their life. I want to bring joy, happiness, and good things into their life. I want to inject a lot of good idea and a lot of uh, moral into their life. Then the pastor say, then why you are here? You are fire. <gasps> yes. The pastor say, why you stay here? Since you have a dream. Why you don't go and choose, chase after your dream? Why you are working here? You are wasting your life. Hello, are you wasting your life? Think about it. Working career, most of our life, 25, let's say you work 25 up to 55, 30 years of your life, you work until 65, 40 years of your life are in your career. So choose a career that you really love it. Don't choose a career that you hate it, but you, you spend all your time in the career, in the things that you don't like. Project your dream. What kind of life you want? What kind of career you want? What kind of life you want to, what kind of person you want to be? Project it. Because when you project it, it will always remind you, chase after your dream. How to do it? You can do a few things. First thing is to write your statement, I want to be this. Then stick to your mirror every morning when you brush your teeth. Ooh, this is what I want. Who, where am I right now? I have to do all the things that I don't like. This is my dream. You have to project and remind yourself. The first thing. Second thing is the same statement put in your, on the table. Okay, your office table. When you do things, always remind you, this is what I want to be. And people come to your table, hey, what is this? This is your dream? Then why are you still here? They always ask you this question. To always tell you, you have a dream. You have to project your dream. Don't become confused and lost your own way. You, you, you are losing yourself. You, you are losing. You, you, you lost your way. You don't know what you want to do. You just go day by day, week by week, and month by month, and year by year. You just do something. Then the third one, third way, how to do it? If you have car, normally we write that and put on the, the, the shade for the, the, the sunlight. So we put there. Then when we come to the traffic light, we put it down. And then this is my dream. Then the, then the, the light turns to green, then we put it up and drive again. Another way. Always project your dream. 
project you're doing, what kind of person you want to be, what, kind, what is your career, what is your dream, what you want to project. The last one, let's see. The last one is this, expect faith result. You see the automatic gate, they will automatically lift up when the car comes near. Am I right, this one? When the car comes near, it will go up. This one, automatic gate also, when you press, it will open. I see another one. Another one, glass door, automatic glass door. Have you come across glass door? You go near, then only open. You don't go near, own open. Am I right? There was a man from a rural places. He did not know. He said, oh, this glass door open and closed by itself. He said, anyone, someone control it. Then he come near to the door, and the door open. Oh, he jumped back. Oh, then the door closed. Oh, luckily, I did not go through. Then after that, he come near, then the door open, then he jump faster, fastly jump. Then oh, close, then the, clo- the door closed. He said, Wow, someone tried to, try to jam me or what, or try to do some trick on me. Don't know. Sometimes we don't, we don't see anybody open the door or the, the, the glass door. We just wait for somebody. No, you have to go near. As you come near, the thing will automatically open. This is called fit result. You must believe and think in your mind and as you continue to project your dream and believe things will happen as you have faith. And one time, this, the great preacher in Britain called Spurgeon. Spurgeon came to the house of the friend one day and he, but the friend was not around and he saw a, a glass border is very big at the bottom and a narrow at the neck of the border. But The funny thing is, in this glass border, inside got a fresh apple. Fresh apple. It's not a fake one. It's not a plastic one. It's a fresh one. How come got a fresh apple inside the the, the glass border? How can he do that? How can he put the the, 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 the apple into into the the, the glass? He cannot cannot figure out. Can you figure out how how he did it? Huh? Wrong? Huh? Grow it in the glass? How can it grow? <laughs> yeah, fresh apple. It's a true apple. How can an apple fall into the glass? He don't understand. It's okay if you don't understand. Then he walk out and he go through the apple, apple tree. Then he saw a lot of glass bottle on the tree. Oh, then he realized when the, before the apple become big, he already put into the bottle and then tie it to the tree when as the apple grow bigger and bigger and then fall into the the glass then they will bring it up bring it down and then go to the market and put there everybody marvel amazing and people buy the tourists will buy and go back and show the people so amazing a fresh apple into a bottle you see before it happened you must have something in your mind that you believe that something amazing is going to happen in your life. Same thing. You are, do you believe something amazing happened to your life? Or you only foresee all the bad things will happen to your life? You must believe that. You must project your dream and then you must have faith result. I believe that God is my Father. He will take care of me. If I continue to have faith in God, I believe that good thing is await for me. The will of God is what? Good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Amen. Do you believe that? If you believe in God, you can trust in God. Amen. Especially, God specializes in things thought impossible. Once again, our God is always do the things that we thought impossible. That is called mission impossible. Not Tom Cruise. It's our God. <laughs> he always do things impossible. <laughs> mission impossible. He'll make it happen. Brother and sister, and the last one is this. The, the same city, the same old man, a wise man, and then one of the uh, intelligent, genius, young, young boy uh, came around and said, hey, I heard that you are the most intelligent old man in our, in our city, the most wise man, the wisest man in our city. Uh, are you the one? He said, no, the, the people just say that. Uh, don't take it seriously. No, I want to try. I want to challenge you. Wow, the young boy want to challenge him. He said, in my hand, I hold a bird. I want you to tell me whether the bird is, is dying, but is already dead or still alive. And put a hand at the back. And you know, 
this young boy tried to treat the old man. The old man said, Oh, if I say he's still alive, he will press and kill the bird and show me.